As you know, the reactants are the molecules that are featured on the left-hand side of a balanced chemical equation. Of all of our reactants, one of them is always designated the limiting reactant, and the limiting reactant is just simply the reactant that gets used up first in a chemical reaction. So it's the first one that we run out of. And when we run out of the limiting reactant, this causes the entire reaction to stop when the reaction stops, we are no longer forming or making any product. So in a way, the limiting reactant controls how much product we make, or it limits, which is how it gets its name. It limits the amount of product that is made. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to identify the limiting reactant in a chemical reaction. And this is the example that we'll be using for this problem. It is a pretty simple example, one that we could probably do in our head, um, but the steps that you take to solve a limiting reactant problem are the same, whether it's a hard problem or an easy problem. So the limiting reactant problems require you to use stoichiometry, which means that they always are going to include a balanced chemical equation, or if they don't include a, a balanced equation, you need to provide it. You'll also notice in the limiting reactant problem, you're going to be provided with information about every single one of the reactants that's necessary in order to solve the problem. This question is asking us to figure out which reactant is limiting, which means it's just asking us which one of these things are we going to run out of first. Now, like I said, we're going to solve this problem using stoichiometry. And really what I want you to do temporarily is kind of think about this problem in different words. So we're just going to kind of ignore the wording of this problem right now, and we're going to write our own problem. To write our own problem, we're going to start by focusing on one of the reactants, and it honestly doesn't matter which one you choose. You could choose either one. So let's just choose magnesium because it is first in the chemical equation as we go from left to right. And so we're going to write a new problem. How much magnesium is needed to react with what we have in terms of oxygen, seven moles of oxygen. So we're, like I said, we're just choosing to focus on magnesium and we're just trying to figure out how much magnesium we actually need to react with those seven moles of O2. Now, of course the problem is telling us that we have 10 moles of magnesium, but we're trying to figure out how, how, much, how many of those 10 moles we actually need. Do we need all of them? Do we need more? Do we need less? How much do we need? Now, like I said, in this step right here where you're writing your own question, it really doesn't matter if you chose to focus on magnesium or oxygen. So let's just pretend, just to see things going in both, um, from both perspectives, let's pretend that instead we chose to focus on the oxygen. So let's give ourselves some space and let's write a different question. How much oxygen is needed to react with the quantity that we have of magnesium, which is 10 moles, to react with 10 moles of magnesium. Now, just to be clear, when you're actually solving these problems, you only need to do one or the other. You don't need to do both of these. You would just choose to do one or the other. But because this is an example, I'm going to show it to you from both perspectives. So, what we're going to do now, like I said, is we're just going to ignore this problem temporarily and we're just going to answer these two stoichiometry questions. How much magnesium is needed to react with 7 moles of oxygen? So let's go ahead and set that up. 7 moles of oxygen, we're just converting from moles of oxygen into moles of magnesium using the balanced chemical equation, using the coefficients, two moles of magnesium for every one mole of oxygen. So this tells us that we need 14 moles of magnesium to react with the seven moles of O2. And now we have to ask ourselves, um, what kind of information do we get from the results of, of what we just calculated? This interpreted, what this says is that if we have seven moles of O2, we're going to need to have 14 moles of magnesium. Now we take that information back to the problem. Do we have enough magnesium to react with all of 
the oxygen. So we're going, in this step, we're going to be comparing what we have, compare what we have with what we calculated that we need. Compare what we have, which is um, 10 moles, to what we need, which is 14 moles. And we can see that we don't have enough. When there's not enough, this means that the substance that we don't have enough of is limiting. It is our limiting reactant. And so we've determined we don't have enough magnesium. It is limiting. Now, again, um, just to be able to see this from two different perspectives, we are going to follow through with the steps uh, that we would take if we had chose to write the question in this way. Again, I want to emphasize that if this is what we started with, we at this point have done enough calculations to answer the question. We know that magnesium is a limiting reactant. But for the purposes of the example, we're going to pretend, let's pretend like we didn't actually solve this problem right here. Let's pretend like this is the problem that we wanted to solve. So we're going to start back over. How much oxygen is needed to react with 10 moles of magnesium? So we're doing the exact same thing just from the perspective of magnesium instead of oxygen. We need another conversion factor, moles of magnesium on the bottom, moles of oxygen on the top, use the coefficients from the equation. We can see that we need five moles of oxygen to react with 10 moles of magnesium. And again, we're going to compare what we have we're going to be comparing what we have, which is 7 moles of oxygen, to what we need, which is 5 moles of oxygen. We have enough. We have enough oxygen, which means that the oxygen is not limiting. which is exactly what we've determined. If we know that the oxygen is not limiting, that means that the other substance is the limiting reactant.